Hey, we know. Shalom Alechem, my friends, my family, the believers in Christ and all who want to be. <laughs> Miss Faha. Yes. La résistance, les conquérants, les victorieux, les élus, alléluia. <laughs> I hope you are doing good or at least okay. I mean, that's good too in 2024, I'm telling you. Yes. Come on, hand squeeze. Or give me five about that. <laughs> oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together again. Laughing is medicine. And the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? We can laugh because uh, we are still in peace with God. And God's peace can no one comprehend. But we are going to try our best to show it to the world, blow by blow. Come on, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Abba Jehovah, Yahweh Hashem, you have so many names. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior, our Lord, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. We thank you for carrying us through the week again. We never take that for granted. We know that the most important is to stay with you every day. That's why we do our best. But at times, Lord, we make mistakes. Sometimes we even mess up, dear God. Please have mercy to not let the enemy dump a load of guilt in our minds. Help us remember that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And of course, you want us also to forgive others and testify about how we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb shed in Israel, the Holy Land. Dear God, at times when we don't realize, because it's not easy to grasp how much you love us, Lord God. Please help us to just remember that great story of the cross. To always remember this powerful name of Yeshua who makes the enemy flee. You are our only hope, dear God. Please grant us wisdom, clarity, faith, even in, in, in a chaos caused by whatever or whoever. We know that you, God, you, God, you can make a way out of nowhere. We love you, God. We need you, God. And, uh, of course, I have to add that line, dear God. We want to have some fun, too. And we want more than enough money, too, on this planet. We don't want only problems, dear God. Please. And please, Lord Maranatha. This is my general prayer for your Holy Sabbath today. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> yes, happy Sabbath, you all, no matter what. <laughs> okay, let's read. The word of God. Today I want to read uh, in the book of Revelation again. Huh? Uh, today, uh, let's read the chapter 21. Uh, let's see verse uh, 9 to 15. Huh? I'm going to read it uh, in the ESV. Huh? Uh, of course, you can read it in uh, any version you like. It's going to be pretty much the same message. Okay, let's start that. The vision of the new Jerusalem. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came to me and said, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He carried me away in the spirit to a large high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. The glory of God was 
its radiance and its light was like a valuable gem, like jasper, as clear as crystal. It had a large high wall with twelve gates. Twelve angels were at the gates, and the names of the twelve tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb were written on them. The angel who was talking to me had a gold measuring rod to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. Wow. Interesting, eh? Now, um, here the Apostle John describes the vision of the New Jerusalem, a holy, highly significant city that represents God's final dwelling place with humanity in the new heavens and the new earth. This city appears after the final judgment and the establishment of a new order where death, sorrow, and pain are no more. Wow, we can't wait. Well, right, we have some symbolism and meaning, you know, of the new Jerusalem here. This city is rich in symbolism. It represents the ultimate fulfillment of God's promise, you know, the restoration of all things and eternal communion between God and his people. You know, here... um. Let's, you know, let's make like a, a breakdown of some keys, uh, you know, of this passage. Uh, here, is, you know, they talk about the bride of the lamb. The angel refers to the city also as a bride, you know, the wife of the lamb. Uh, it symbolizes the intimate and, uh, con, um, and covenantal relationship between God, you know, through Jesus, the lamb and his people. In the New Testament, the church is often referred to as uh, the bride of Christ, you know. So the New Jerusalem is a city with, you know, a bride, which represents the people of God, redeemed and perfected. Some Christians, you know, uh, think a little further, you know, like, uh, yes, the Lord is really going to get married, you know, with, with, with uh, this bride who is going to be a real, you know, <laughs> We could go further and further. Since there is a, a famous banquet, you know, which is already ready, and it's mentioned, you know, here also in the book of uh, Revelation. Well, that's a beautiful mystery, and I don't want to go there right now. Uh, let's speak general. <laughs> okay, here now, the coming down uh, from heaven. The city descends from heaven, symbolizing that uh, it's not of human origin, but a divine gift. This new city represents the ultimate reconciliation of heaven and earth, where God comes to dwell among his people eternally. It's a real city. It's just not a symbol, symbolism. It's, it's literally a real city too. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's talk about the radiance and the glory. You know, the radiance of the city is compared to a jasper stone, clear as crystal, which signifies the purity and glory of God. You know, the light is likely meant to reflect the presence of God as his glory illuminates the, the city. Well, I just had a, <laughs> a notification or something or a texting. Anyway. Let's move on. The precious stones represent the, you know, the beauty and priceless nature of the New Jerusalem. And we all know that, you know, God shows only the, the gems which can uh, let light, you know, go through. He didn't choose any types of, of gems. We know that, you know, there was no diamonds <laughs> like God doesn't like diamonds like that. Anyway, that's another topic. Uh, here, let's stick on this verse right now. These verses are these lines, uh, 9 to 15. Uh, they're talking about 12 gates and 12 angels. The 12 gates represent the entrance into the city and they have a significant meaning. 12 tribes of Israel, you know, the trail, the, the, 
the 12 tribes of Israel. The gates bear the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, symbolizing that the fulfillment of God's promise includes both the Old Testament. Yes, the, the Old Testament people of God, huh, Israel, and the New Testament church, you know. Uh, three gates on each side, you know, north, south, east, west, suggest that the invitation to enter this city is universal. It's open to all nations and peoples. There is no racism in heaven, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. There is no such thing there. And then we talk about these 12 foundations, you know, with the uh, uh, apostles' names. The city's foundation have, um, has 12 layers with the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, uh, uh, you know, inscribed on them. This links the city to the teachings of the apostles and the new covenant in Christ. It emphasizes that the church built on the foundation of the apostles' teaching is an integral part of the new Jerusalem. Then they're talking about measuring the city. The angel uses a golden measuring rod to measure the city. This symbolizes that the new Jerusalem is carefully planned and constructed according to divine order, representing perfection and completeness. Measurements in Revelation often signify something of immense spiritual importance, emphasizing that this city is God's perfect design for the future. Okay, symbolism of uh, the city as a whole. Yes, the new uh, Jerusalem represents God's final dwelling place with his people. Huh? It sounds like a repetition, but you know, I emphasize on that. It's a city of perfect communion between God and humanity where death and suffering no longer exist. There is no devil there. There is no darkness. The, this is the fulfillment of God's promise, both to Israel, you know, represented by the 12 tribes, and the church represented uh, by the 12 apostles. Mm -hmm. So it's showing that God's covenant is eternal and inclusive of uh, all his people throughout history. Mm -hmm. Purity and holiness. Its radiance like a precious jewel represents the purity, holiness, and glory of God's eternal kingdom. And now let's talk a little bit about the broader context of Revelation 21. This vision is uh, part of John's larger vision of a new heaven and a new earth, you know. Uh, in this new creation, God uh, makes his dwelling among his people, wiping away every tear. The new Jerusalem contrasts the earlier imagery of the fallen city of uh, Babylon in Revelation 18, which represents evil and corruption. Well, conclusion, uh, what is the city? The new Jerusalem is both a literal place where God's people will dwell in eternity, uh, a real place, living in his presence, enjoying eternal peace and uh, free from sin, death, and suffering. Eh? And it's also a symbol of God's people, the bride of the Lamb, perfected and glorified, united with Christ in a holy and everlasting relationship. And, and it's also a real bride, somehow not easy to explain, but God, Jesus, Yeshua is really going to get married, you know. This banquet is real, this wedding is real too. So it's going to be awesome. Hmm? We cannot grasp all of it right now, but it's going to be awesome. This city embodies the hope and promise of God's ultimate victory, his dream coming true, you know, where the entire world is renewed and his eternal kingdom is established forever. Yes, happy Sabbath. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. God bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen, bye-bye.